Hey there folks and welcome back for another shaving video. I'm your host CDB, you're not, and today we're going to use uh, 1898 plus one. Forget the Hemingway on the label, this has now changed or it changed about a year ago um, because the Shaving Shop Club was sent a <laughs> cease and desist from the Hemingway folks. So anyway, it's called 1898 plus one. I just happen to have one of the first ones and, and I'll have it. And it is a wonderful soap, by the way. It's very difficult to describe the scent some sweetness, some spicy um, elements. Um, go to the website and check it out. I'll link it below if you want to get the scent notes. And I think I know which soap maker makes this soap because it has some performance characteristics that I really like. And I'm and I think it comes from a brand that I really, really, really like. But I will not uh, speculate on that because I don't know it for a fact. And by the and anyway, it's it's Peter Charcalis's soap. And if he doesn't want it announced, I wouldn't announce it anyway. At any rate, we're also going to use the charcoal razor, which I like a lot. This is one of my favorite razors. It is not an inexpensive razor. It is definitely an artisan level uh, razor. Not everybody loved it, but most people did. Guys like David Gonzalez didn't really care for it, and, and that's fair. If you don't care for it and it doesn't blow your socks off, you know, um, it doesn't. But I really like it a lot, and I have no buyer's remorse. Okay, let me wet the face, and we shall get going. Stay tuned. All right, here we go with our 1898 plus one, which again is a wonderful soap. Um, Peter Chicalis is a friend of mine. So take that into consideration. Um, I'm naturally, you know, I, I, I do have a relationship with him beyond just a buyer. I do buy this stuff, don't get me wrong, but uh, I consider him to be a friend. I've met him in person. I think he's a wonderful guy. And uh, I saw something this week um, actually they had posted it in a group because I don't go to Reddit usually. Um, in fact, I haven't been going to a lot of places on social media because they're just constant fighting among the folks in the community. And, but what I saw the other day was very disheartening, disheartening because it was another shaving vendor sent, essentially running, um, Peter Charcalis down saying, you know, basically he's not good to his word and, um, I think casting doubt on the fact whether Peter mixes some of his own fragrances, and I can tell you for a fact that he does, and the reason why is because he and I were working on something together, and he would talk about it on the phone, and then the very next day he would drop it in the mail, his uh, test mix of fragrances. Now, he does hire out um, perfumers as well to do a lot of his stuff, but I can tell you for a fact and absolute certainty that uh, he also has been over the last year or better um, experimenting and learning to do it himself. Now that is not to say the majority of his products are his own um, creation per se. Um, he commissioned them, so that would make them actually his creation. He commissioned some, but I can tell you for a fact for a fact, he does um, mix some on his own and experiment with some on his own. I don't know how many he's actually put up for sale, but we were working together on something. I haven't finished it, and uh, he does do that. So that was a lie, an outright lie. And it's very disheartening for me because um, Peter is a friend. And... When I see things like that, if I still use that brand, I wouldn't any longer. Um, and I'm not asking you to. Let me be clear about that. It's just, it was disheartening. And I'll cover it a little bit more when we come back for pass two. Feather is the blade, and that was a smooth, smooth first pass. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. Back for pass two. And anyway, um, in the shaving community, they, the users sort of demand, or the... Uh, Folks who buy the product, users, whatever you want to call them. I'm used to IT, so I call folks users because they use the services. But customers, you know, demand pretty good form um, from its vendors. And and quite honestly, sometimes it's it's not reasonable. It's a lot more, we, we expect a lot more character-wise for whatever reason, for right or wrong, 
from the artisans in the community. I guess because we know them and we develop relationships with them. And some of them use that to our, their advantage to sell products. And there's no problem with that. But at any rate, um, we sort of expect more than we do from other companies, right or wrong. And when I see artisans running other artisans down in public, and some folks will say he, he, you know, he wasn't being run down. Yes, he was, and it was deliberate, in my uh, opinion, because you know there was a rift there. I guess um, I just think it's bad form. Oh, I'm getting to the third pass already, and I haven't finished the second. But uh, for me, uh, I'm absolutely turned off by it. It has happened too much. Peter Charkalis is not the only artisan for it to ever happen to. Where it happened, um, having you know. Other artisans talking about how the competition does business. Um, you know, it's been going on for quite some time, and that's why I don't participate um, in a lot of these places because, you know, I just want to try the soap, and if I like it, um, you know, enjoy it. I don't really want to get into all the rest of it. However, you know, when you see your friend being ran down, um, you're not going to just sit by idly and at least not mention him and show him support. So this is what I'm doing today. And, and let me just say this. Whether Peter had made this particular soap or not, I'd still love it. All right. Let's be very fair, straightforward, and honest about it. It is just a great soap, and I just like his products in general. And because he is a friend, if he was putting out crappy products, I'd be forced to tell him. <laughs> so... Um, but I think uh, it's well worth your time to go over and show Pete a little love. I will be doing so after making this video. I'll go over and buy some stuff just to show some report. Because I don't need any soap or shaving products. I got enough that probably last a lifetime. But, you know, I, I don't really appreciate him being run down. I, I really don't. And uh, I had to speak on it, and that'll be the end of it. All right, let's rinse the face, and we'll come back for past three. All right, here we go, pass three. And anyway, um, certainly every artisan, you know, enjoys the same freedom of speech that that the customers do. Um, but like everything in it, like everything else in life, you enjoy those freedoms with a certain amount of responsibility. And when folks are turned off, they're not going to buy your product. And uh, I did see a thread with a a number of people who were either getting rid of their stuff from this particular company or saying they won't buy it. Now some won't actually do it. <laughs> They'll, they're just flapping um, and some will. And I don't ask that anybody do that. Again, I want to be clear about that. You make your own decisions about who you do business with and uh, you don't have to take anything character into consideration at all. And many people don't and God bless them. But it's hard to do when you develop relationships with some of these folks like Pete. So I just, I couldn't do it. Um, but you should go on and do whatever you like and uh, and be happy with it. You know, if you fall on the other side of the fence, that's okay. You know, do what you got to do. But I just didn't particularly care for it. And uh, now let's get back to shaving. Nose is itching. Um, I love this razor. Charcoal razors. Really nice razor, efficient. Again, it didn't blow David's socks off, and it doesn't have to because we all don't have to like the same things. We don't all don't have to like the same brands, and we really don't need to fight over them, um, nor run each other down over them. And uh, let's just use what we want and be happy with it, and move on. I understand it's highly competitive and, you know, sometimes emotions get the best of folks, but uh, overall as users, you know, just buy what you want and be happy with it. And uh, none of it has to have my stamp <laughs> approval on, nor should you worry about that. So you buy exactly what you want, when you want, how you want, how much of how you want of it and use it. And uh, there are people still mad at me because I started using uh, razors like Harry's 
uh, primarily for my head. And then I, you know, I just wanted to try it because I've been uh, using the safety razors for a number of years now. And uh, I said, let's, let's go back and try it and see, was it the razor or was it the soap, the brush technique? And uh, throughout my personal test, I've learned that it's more about technique than anything else. Next comes a blade that agrees with your face and next comes a great soap. And then hardware comes after that in my view. And I've talked about that before. Anyway, we have gotten a really nice shave. And by the way, there's plenty of residual slickness in the soap, which is why I'm able to continue going over these spots without getting weepers, creepers, cuts, and so forth. And so we will uh, rinse the face and we will come back with our aftershave and post. Stay tuned. And all right, here we are back with the magic made by witches, Thayer's. And this one has almost been killed. This one was uh, peach, by the way, was sent to me by Mr. Zach Plavridis because I hadn't tried peach and I do like it. Um, the only thing is they put that dopey tag on the label so you can't really see what it is. And that's no good when you're doing videos like I do. It probably came from Amazon or somewhere, who knows, but never put the tag over the label. Um, it's just bad form and uh, for applications like my application, which is to show it to you when I use it, just to show you what I'm using, just doesn't work out very well. But the product is great. Again, I've been through more Thayer's than any single other product in terms of using it to completion. Um, it's just fantastic. Okay, let's review before we get to the aftershave. The charcoal razor with feather blade, fantastic. Expensive, um, but it is definitely of artisan quality. It's definitely unique and I like it a lot. It is a great razor for me. This one is the level two um, and I like it a lot. I did not mention, and uh, I should have, the Wolf Whiskers uh, brush. And uh, I love Peter Wolf's work. I love his designs. Like he and I, just in terms of a lot of the brushes he puts out, his shapes and designs are just fantastic. This is a custom brush, but it's absolutely superb. And of course, we use the 1898 plus one from the, uh, <clears throat> it was called the club. I don't know what <laughs> Pete is calling it now, but I'll link his website below. It is a wonderful uh, scent and we will finish off with uh, the aftershave, which is fantastic as well. And uh, here we go with a little 1898 plus one. Smells beautiful. And I'm sure that Peter collaborated with a perfumer on this one. But really, when it comes down to it, what does it matter? If you get a soap or a scent that you like, that's all that matters, bottom line. But I can tell you again for a fact, he is doing some of his own stuff. Anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for um, watching this video today. I encourage you to come on in and watch the head shave today with Harry's because I'm going to talk a little bit about some communication I got from Harry's related to head shaving that you might find interesting. So uh, come on back for that later and uh, check out the head shaving video. I might also give you a sneak peek. Sneak peek, I'm not announcing the giveaway for this coming week, but uh, I want to give you a sneak peek at it in the head shaving video. So come on by and check that, and check that out. Excuse me. Until next time, let's help the entire world shave great once again.